He was in fact consigned by God to the consequences of his own unbelief. He was locked up. He became a prisoner to everything that I've described. And so here's a man whose conscience was not strong enough, not informed enough, not wrought upon enough by God, if you like, to make him turn to God in repentance. What does that amount to in salvation terms? Well, it amounts to this, that he died with his sins reckoned to him. He died with his sins reckoned to him. He was never constrained to do anything about his sins in spite of those twinges of conscience. He never turned to Christ. He never listened to John enough. He rejected, sometimes with patronizing unbelief, but always with impenitence. He was a man who didn't know what it was to repent. And if you don't repent, then you die with your sins reckoned to you. So we need to remember this, that the God who troubles the conscience, the God who troubles the conscience, is also the God who reckons sin. The God who troubles the conscience is the God who reckons sin. Scripture says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not reckon sin. The man whom he doesn't reckon sin to is the man and the woman whose conscience has been disturbed to the point where they call out to God for mercy. And turn in hatred of their sins to the living God. And so the message of Antipas is this. Don't harden your heart. Don't let that, pro that, that, that thing progress to the point of no return. What does it say in Hebrews 3.16? And to whom did God swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who were disobedient. It's not disobedient once. But it's repeated, repeated, repeated disobedience. The hardening of the heart. To the point where repentance is not now possible. And so Christ's right righteousness was not reckoned to him either. His sins were reckoned, but Christ's righteousness wasn't. He rejected the only possibility of acquittal. His humiliation of Jesus was a foretaste of his own eternal humiliation. He was unable to atone for his sins. He was able to turn back and reverse the course of his life. He rejected God's atonement because he rejected the personal work of Jesus Christ. I will say in closing, brethren, I am persuaded of better things of you, as the, the writer to the Hebrew says, persuaded of better things of you, that you value your conscience as it's informed by the word of God. Conscience, private conscience, is, is not the rule of our life, but God has given us a conscience. We need to inform it by the scriptures, so that we know how to respond to those things in our lives which are out of line with the word and the will of God. So that we can conform our lives more and more to the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't atone for our sins. He has atoned for us. And so he leads us to repentance. Through the activity of our conscience quickened by the Holy Spirit. Informed by the word of God in order that we may trust in Christ and not have our sins reckoned to us. For they have been reckoned to Jesus. And in order that we might have Christ's righteousness reckoned to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the operation of your grace through the Holy Spirit in the life of sinners like us. We pray for those who hover on the very edge of turning their back.
fully and finally on Christ, and we pray that you will stretch forth your hand to save even them. Grant them, O oh God, that uh, ability from you to listen to the voice of your word in their conscience and turn again in repentance and faith to the Lord Jesus. Let your word dwell richly in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat>